giving himself a lot of options by playing this Mewtwo and Mew GX deck. And now we do see the prizes. So here it is, the secret's out. We are going to see ADP one more time out of Kaiwan Kababe and Tord Reckliff with a couple of fire energies and a Victini V. It seems like the... It seems like we may be getting some sort of a fire toolbox deck out of Tord here. And there it is, the Pokemon get flipped over. We see Zacian against Jirachi to start things off with Kaiwen going first and a quick ball right away. Gonna find himself any basic Pokemon from his deck that he'd like to find. Of course, with Zacian, you, uh, you already have a great first turn ahead of you, so what you wanna start doing is start to, uh, start to set yourself up for a, uh, a turn to uh, ADP. Yeah, if he can get the Arceus, uh, Dialga, and Palkia and start to work on Ultra Creation, he's going to a great spot. So really, just trying to find one of those um, energies to attach to his Pokemon does already find that Arceus, Dialga, and Palkia. And we saw that he was able to discard a Metal Energy, so I'm sure that the rest of his hand's probably pretty good if he's able to uh, throw that, hand, uh, that, that card away for himself there. And there's Arceus, Dialga, Palkia with a Metal Energy attached to it. And... I mean, that may be it. We may just see Intrepid Sword from here. Or actually, it looks like we're seeing a switch first. Intrepid Sword? And now Intrepid Sword, finding himself three new cards. None are metal energy, so they all go to his hand. And then Tord begins his first turn of the game with the Jirachi already uh, active and another one in hand. Those are the right Pokemon in play for, for Tord. Is, you know, this is, this is a deck we've seen Tord pilot before, or at least a version of it. Yeah, this is where Tord loves Seven. to be. He's, he's back to good old welder engines, and uh, he's... Got his Jirachis to, to help him out, make sure that he uh, plays this as consistently as possible. Starting off with that Cherish Ball likely means that he's going to get to start to work on Mewtwo and Friends, get some energy attachments down, and then he's really going to start pushing. Uh, this list, however, is a little different now. It's, it's taken on um, a version that isn't completely focused on that turn one welder, especially with the rule change. You kind of have to build your deck a little bit differently now. So we see that Tord is going to play that one Professor's Research in his deck so he can use that and maybe set up for the second turn Welder. And I think he does already have that research in hand. So we're going to see a less explosive deck come out of Tord here, but with just as many options as before, if not more. And it's just it, it's really going to come down to a, a game of finesse for Tord as he may not have the explosion that he that he wants that you might have expected from uh, from welder decks in the past with you know something like a five energy turn two or something along those lines but now you're going to see just basically trying to outsmart your opponent with the options that you have available to you with uh with perfection so tord is going to eye down that charizard it does 300 damage with the gx attack which is a pretty fantastic way to knock out a Arceus dialgum palkia with 280 hit points so eyeing that down that also just means that he is going to need to find four energies uh, yeah, that means double welder. In his first two turns. Yep. So if he gets an energy attachment this turn, then he only needs one welder to go along with that. He can just welder on the following turn there. So he is now starting to sculpt out his first couple of turns of the game. Of course, we're going to want to see a Mewtwo and Mew in play as soon as possible. Just lots of different attacks available to Mewtwo and Mew, but uh, you have to get yourself there. You can't just... You can't just... Uh, you know, uh, assume that perfection is going to be available at all times. You need to have multiple attacks for perfection so that you can use the, the best possible attack in the, uh, on the right turn. Yep, so we do see that Tord does find that Mewtwo for himself has Psychic Energy to go along with this, and then I'm curious to see what the rest of his hand has. I know he has the research, but I didn't see one of the cards. If it is Welder, we could see him then potentially try to go with that Jirachi, maybe find Giant Hearth, and then he would just get the, the, metal, the fire energies he wants for the Welder. Actually, it looks like it is just going to be that research. So he's going to just push now. Next turn is going to be the welder for him if he does find it. Stealthy Hood, too. Also on uh, the Mewtwo and Mew before, playing the Professor's Research to draw seven new cards after discarding the rest of his hand. And we still haven't seen any Stellar Wishes yet. So the turn is young here for Torrid. Yeah, this is going to take a little bit of time, boys and girls. He's got multiple Cherish Balls. So he can start to continue to push through this deck. Just pull out some cards that he'd like to see. Uh, maybe later in the t uh, for the following turn. Uh, nothing Galio. terribly impactful this turn, but he wants to make sure that when he does yep. use Stellar Wish that he gives himself as many possible outs to reach that Welder. So Soul Galio was the first Cherish Ball target, and then, then he's looking like it's going to be the second. Uh, of <laughs> course, Soul Galio may be the, the best possible attack that you can have on turn two. Well, that's not necessarily true, but... <laughs> you could do 300. <laughs> that's not necessarily true. <laughs> but 
maybe the best setup attack you have in the deck. Yeah, it's it's pretty great. If you it, it, a turn like this turn would have been a great turn if he had the welder. Maybe he could have gotten some turbo strike um, and accelerated further than we're used to seeing this deck on the first turn uh, since the rule change and whatnot. But it's it's still going to be a great card and it's a great resource to have maybe later on in the game. Obviously, you never want to see it in your deck, so just throw it away now and maybe have that as a potential out later. Giant Hearth comes down, followed by Dedene to dead a change and draw six new cards. So many cards drawn here for Tord. And now discards a card in order to find himself two fires. That's a Macargo yep. GX, I believe, that hit the discard pile now. That's right. So this means that he will be able to set up. He can get that, uh, that Charizard 300 damage. And if Mewtwo does survive uh, a little further past that, maybe he could use Lava Flow and just start to uh, knock out an, another big Pokemon like Azashi and V. So Tord really is starting to line himself up. He also has multiple fire energies in hand now because of the hearth, and he has that welder in hand all before using Jirachi. <laughs> I guess that's why Tord plays this deck. It loves him. Well, when you build a deck to do this and it does it, it feels pretty good. Yeah, no kidding. And the skateboard just about to, well, maybe the best card that he could have found there with that first uh, Jirachi. Now it's going to allow him to... Retreat that Jirachi, promote another one if he chooses to do so. So curious, actually, if he does have the Latios available. Maybe he has clear vision, but I, I'm not sure if he has that available to him. That is a strategy that some players choose to go with if they don't want to go with that big 300 damage knockout from a Charizard uh, GX attack. Sometimes yeah, clear we vision is great. Yeah, sometimes we just see players sneak in a clear vision, and then uh, they just don't have to worry about any of the, the effects that an ADP can bring along from there. Yeah, fantastic counter to Arceus and Dialga's Ultra Creation. You know, I always say Arceus and Dialga, and I always forget about Palkia. Well, <laughs> I ignore Palkia, Palkia more Palkia than is going to get you one day, man. Yeah. Show some respect. I apologize <laughs> to all Palkia fans around the world. All three of you. And it uh, looks like a sleep flip to pass the turn here for Tord. Now Tywin gets to start his second turn of the game. And after going first, that means he gets to start really start to set up his... Uh, his turn from here on, or his game plan from here on out, I should say. Tag call right away, the very first card played. Tag call's great because, I mean, first of all, it, it finds you the, the Arceus and Dialga if you don't have it yet. But more than anything, like, you can find Guzma and Hollow, which is going to find you that special energy. There's so many things that, that Tag call really does for this deck, and I think that it's just um, an underappreciated engine. Yeah, it, it's slower, but it, the, the fact that it's so consistent in a, in a deck that goes slower like this, trying to get that just the turn two into turn three big attacks, it's, it's definitely a pretty great engine to use. And how about all of these extremely <laughs> foiled out decks, uh, especially Kaiwin's here? It's, it's a thing of beauty, honestly, more than anything. This makes me wonder where, why I use my paycheck on my mortgage. <laughs> <laughs> I could just buy the best deck ever and feel really good. Well, if you were going to be playing at the international championships, I, I think I'd agree with you. <laughs> I think I would have had to trade the deck to, to get on the flight. <laughs> and now that's a rainbow energy. On to that Arceus Dialga Palkia tag team. That's going to mean an altered creation before this turns over. First the counter stadium, though. And now <laughs> we're starting to see this energy start to flow for Kaiwin. And there it is, the GX marker gets flipped face down, which means Altered Creation GX. From here on out, an additional prize card will be taken whenever Kaiwin takes a prize. And of course, if Kaiwin ever deals damage, he's gonna be dealing 30 more of it. Right, I, and I, I think we will see him deal some damage. It's certainly not unlikely, but man, Tord has a turn lined up, ladies and gentlemen. He has just about everything that he needs there. He also has multiple switch, so he, with the Jirachis, he could just pretty much grab everything that he wants from his deck. First, gonna start with that Welder, take three out of there, and then he can start to thin down and grab specifically what he wants with the Jirachis. Okay, well, those Welders are the key to victory here for Tord. They help you accelerate into your strongest attacks with perfection. We already see a Solgaleo, we see a Charizard GX. Tons of options already available in the discard pile for Tord. And it seems to only be a case of Tord's riches getting richer here as he finds another Cherish Ball potentially to find himself another Pokemon if he chooses to play it. That could be any Pokemon GX in his deck. I mean, he has so many different one-ofs in his deck that you have to believe that he's just going to start sculpting out the perfect game plan for the remaining turns. This is what makes Tord one of the greatest of all time. He knows he has a generally good idea of what you 
uh, what your game plan is going to be for the foreseeable future. He's played lots of matches. He's played this matchup, I'm sure, tons of times. I'm sure that he knows what to expect out of this situation. So at this point, he tries to counter it as best as possible. Now, Kaiwin not out of it quite yet, although uh, he is definitely going to be facing... Uh, he is going to have his back against the wall after a Charizard GX knockout from Mewtwo and Mew potentially this turn. And that means that Kaiwin will have to find some Metal Saucers. He's going to have to find a, a return here, uh, a return answer here to towards devastating second turn. Yeah, so fortunately for Kaiwin, he was able to get that Shrine of Punishment. That 10 damage is actually very relevant. Just the fact that uh, now Zacian is hitting for 260 damage into 270 hit point Pokemon that have 10 damage on them. It's going to be pretty huge for him. It means that this return knockout isn't uh, completely unfathomable. He does have that uh, escape port as well on the Mew, so he will be able to immediately get that saucer, but I don't know what the rest of his hand has for him. So trying to map out if he does have this answer to the Mew is... It's really uh, just the saucer should. that he needs, right? And the metal? Yeah, if he has the, yeah. if he has, if he has the saucer, in, but he needs the metal to go along with it. And right. Uh, it's it starts to get tricky and then what else does he have from there because he only has like four cards in hand yeah uh so saucer metal is kind of the first <laughs> the first step and then from that point on you kind of have to figure it out uh but at the same time i mean you have to give credit to towards setup here you have to give credit to these, this uh this situation where uh where toward finds himself in because he will be able to yep. get a big knockout on that arceus dalga and palkia tag team before it can even start to accelerate uh kaiwin's energies yeah, and it, it's very unlikely that you'll see uh, Kaiwin ever get to Accelerate Energies, just with the way that this matchup tends to go. A lot of the time, Tord will find that answer, uh, find that big 300, and it looks like he does have that lined up. Yeah, it looks like that was the last Fire Energy in the deck here for, for Tord, as he does play Giant Hearth. So only able to find one Fire, but, I mean, that's the one he needs. Yeah, this is starting to look pretty difficult for for Tord, honestly, if Kaiwin's able to find the right cards, if he can find maybe a supporter to keep his hand uh, a refreshed, it, it looks pretty difficult for Tord to, to pull out a, a victory here, even though he's taking this huge knockout right now. Yeah, this is, remember, this is the second turn. Um, this is the second turn of the game here for Tord, and, uh, you know, you can't really ask for too much more out of Tord's situation, right? He got himself that turn two welder. He got himself that perfection uh, plus Charizard GX combination. Like, he, he has pretty much everything he needs for this matchup. Now, with that said, this is not an easy matchup. It's definitely a back-and-forth exchange. And if Kaiwin can get his uh, get what he needs, then, yeah, I mean, it, it could it could get rough for Tord here. Yeah, Tord needs time. After he takes this knockout, he's going to need to... Rebuild? Yeah, and he, he also needs to find maybe some more fire energies off of his prize cards, potentially, so that he has something to welder because it's just looking tough. Yeah, it looks like he can't even uh, afford to use his GX attack here. He's going to go ahead and attach an energy to his Mewtwo, and uh, we'll see what option he decides to go with here. It looks like it's like going to be Solgaleo. Yeah. yeah. So Galio dealing 120 damage and then attaching two fires from the discard pile onto Mewtwo. So it looks like it's an energy conser conservation game instead for Tord, and going to be choosing to two-hit KO this Arceus and Dialga and Palkia, which means we're going to be seeing uh, potentially an ultimate right here. Yeah, which, I mean, this is actually a really great play from Tord. He sets himself up now to where Kaiwin doesn't want to lose these energies, but he doesn't have a way to uh, easily swap out right now. And he doesn't have an attacker uh, resting right there on the, on the bench to come in and knock out this Mewtwo. So he is going to have to waste an attack, essentially. But he gets to accelerate some energies, too. So both players kind of buying that extra turn, giving themselves some extra energies, and really okay. setting up for a big battle in the future. Well, not something you see every day as a reset stamps to six. So that implies that we're probably going to be seeing Kaiwin discard the, discard the rest of his hand. Now, yeah, I mean, we could just see a switch and a, a metal saucer and metal energy, right? That could still be something we're going to be seeing. We might not have to see an ultimate ray this turn. And we also do see that Fionn was, uh, came into the hand, unfortunately. Both Mewtwo are pretty much in the same spot, so... Uh, won't provide too much of a, a benefit for him. It's not like Tord's going to promote a Detene or Jirachi into this. So now the Metal Energy gets attached onto the Arceus Dalgan Palkia. So that's three energy on ADP. That's going to mean an ultimate ray to end this turn, which is not obviously not going to be enough to knock out the Mewtwo and Mew, but it will accelerate energy onto the field for Kaiwin. 
Wow, I wonder if Tord's actually setting up for um, using the sure. his Mewtwo's attack. If he could uh, heal himself off and then not find the shrine, then he's actually uh, clear of a Zacian knockout here. Well, he could right. just remove the damage that comes into play, and uh, that'd be pretty sneaky. It'd mean that Kaiwin would need to find that shrine of punishment in order to take the big knockout with the Zacian. Got to see Kaiwin deep in thought before deciding to go with Ultimate Ray, attaching one medal onto the Zashi and then a couple more medals onto the other Pokemon. So the, here's where it starts to get really tricky. I mean, obviously, you have an easy knockout onto the Arceus Dalgum Palkia, but then do you have the final three prizes after that? That's the real question that Tord's got to ask himself. Like, is this is is this a board state where he feels comfortable? And if so, is he going to be attacking with this Mewtwo and Mew? <laughs> Or is he going to be attacking with a benched one with less damage on it? This is this is a tough spot here for Tord. Well, his opponent has two cards in hand. And if he's able to find a Psychic Energy, he can uh, go ahead and use his GX attack, clear all the damage off of himself, knock out a three prize Pokemon, and not be worried about getting return KO'd by his Ashian. So let's do that <laughs> if you can. <laughs> yeah, but that requires another psychic energy. How many do you have ac access yeah, to? That's yeah, true. He, uh, we could see, uh, yeah, it looks like he just only yeah. plays the two. So if he does uh, find that second psychic energy, he could put himself in a good spot. I don't see it in the deck. I don't know so if he's got that option available. So, uh, so since I don't see it in the deck, that implies it's either in the hand or in the prizes, Kyle. Kyle. That does make it a little tougher. <laughs> well, <laughs> It's 100 to 0. You either have it already or you just don't have it at all. And you can't get it for the rest of this uh, turn. Well, that makes it impossible. <laughs> so if Tord has the Psychic Energy in, your, in his hand, you're absolutely right. This would be huge for Tord, as that would clear all the damage counters off, and it would leave Kaiwin with only a two-card hand. I see it. <laughs> There's the Psychic Energy, though, so he does have access to it now. Does he go for it, though? Yeah. Honestly, it, it looks like he, he should. He's got enough energies to set up for um, the Lava Flow with his Macargo with that uh, Mewtwo that's on the bench. So if he does play the Psychic Energy active, he could put himself in, in a situation where he has nine unchallenged energies. And I think he's, yeah, he's, he's going to definitely see this play here available. Perfection from. is giving him access to like seven different GX attacks. And he may just go with the Miraculous Duo GX that he has printed on its own Mewtwo and Mew. It seems it seems like a great strategy, right? Like you make it so difficult for Kaiwin to get the return knockout, but with a two card hand, can Kaiwin do it? Can Let's Kaiwin do it? Me and Tord are on another yeah. level, man. All right, we just we there's <laughs> all that damage removed. That means one knockout onto Kaiwin's energy or onto Kaiwin's Pokemon. That's three prizes taken for Tord. No energy in on the field for Tord. What can Kaiwin do to return? No, no damage on the field. He's got plenty of energies. Yes, I meant no damage, sorry. <laughs> so what can Kaiwen do to return serve? There's a Shrine of Punishment, I believe. All right, but with his hand, he... You need Shrine, you need Metal, and you need a way to retreat this Jirage, which you already have. Looks like he does have the Escape Ward, yeah. So does get the Shrine, does have... All you need is a Metal. Well, it looks like he would be able to then answer, but he's not happy with it. He wanted to get a little bit more out of that, it looks like. He's not going to have any other cards uh, in his hand after he does take this knockout, but... I mean, you did find it, so yeah, <laughs> you've I mean, got to be a little excited there. You basically countered the Miraculous Duo. Yep. Now, this was, this was what he needed to find. He, There's I, that Shrine. There's that promoted Zacian. That's going to mean a big return knockout onto that Mew 2 and Mew Tag Team GX. We saw all of those damage counters go away, but no damage counters will be added by the end of Kaiwin's turn, as it's going to mean four prizes taken by Kaiwin, thanks to that Altered Creation GX. One more knockout for Kaiwin to win this game but he's got all of his eggs in this one Zashian basket. Or most of his eggs, anyway. Oh, yeah, he's got that Absol. <laughs> yeah. He'll figure it out. <laughs> oh, uh, this is close, Kyle. Yeah, this, this is really close. This is definitely coming down to the wire. This is a very exciting game. You have four oh energies on goodness. this Mewtwo and Mew. What a time you effect. have a reset stamp to three, or reset stamp to, I believe, two. There'll be two, yeah. yeah. You, you got to, there you, should be four prizes taken. Got to go ahead and use that uh, that GX attack for himself. So that was four prizes. That and he there's took. the counter stadium, Giant wow. Hearth coming right back down. So I see Kaiwen drawing three though. Oh, uh, excuse us. Yes. That, uh, so with the uh, with the the damage being placed after, he actually oh, missed it was out placed on the after. Effect. Yeah. Yeah. It was, of course, it wasn't placed before. 
You're right. Yeah. So of course, not trying a plus to punishment. Power. <laughs> yes, trying to punishment was dealt the damage between turns since it's not a knockout dealt by your Pokemon. You're only taking three prizes. You're absolutely correct. And that does mean that Kaiwin has access to one more, uh, one more card in hand. So in that, in this case, it's kind of a double-edged sword. Yes, it's a little bit harder for you to get your win because you still need three more prizes. But hey, at least you have one more card available to you in your hand after that reset stamp. Yep, does make it. I mean, you're still going through the same Mewtwo either way, it looks like, but uh, potentially yep. still could just eye out that Dedenne. Yeah, that Dedenne like. seems very easy to knock out. <laughs> he said, <laughs> Flare Blitz, boom. <laughs> all right, well, that is that knockout. On to Kaiwin's Zacian. That's all the poke. That's all, all the Zacians in play here. Gone for Kaiwin. One prize remaining for Tord. Still three for Kaiwin. Kaiwin Kababe. Staying in this neck and neck with Tord Reklev. But at this point is when he uh, has I'm to pull out hurt, but I'll still shuffle again. what may be the unthinkable here. Like, it seems very difficult for him to come up with a three-prize knockout yeah, right now. And with Tord only, remain, only needing one more prize, it seems very tough for Kaiwin to come back here. Yeah, this is this is looking hard. Metal Saucer, though. Yeah, that's going to help. He actually also found uh, the custom, custom catcher to go with it. Can draw a little extra. Well, hey, why not one more? All right. Well, Metal Saucer into custom, into custom, into Stellar Wish. Insane. A quick ball can find himself another Zacian, but Let me just stay here. that might be it. That might be the end of game one. I think Tord's taking it, Kyle. I, I, I mean, I think he was able to find the right route there for himself. He, he put himself in a great position, and he made Kaiwen have to find that one card. Kaiwen was able to find it, but didn't have any supporters to go along with it afterwards. So now we see him in. just really struggling to keep up, and this Mewtwo has so many energies. It seems very likely that Tord just finds the right attack this, this coming turn here to, to clear it out. Quick ball, metal yeah, with only one prize remaining, any knockout is fine for Tord. All he needs is one more knockout. Well, that would have been a good card if uh, Stealthy Hood wasn't a card. Yep, I know. It's terrible, right? He was able to find that Mimikyu. And now it looks like Mew is the Pokemon of choice. And then I'll Mew. Ah, okay. So he's got the Lysander Labs. He gets to, to shut off the Stealthy Hood. And he's really just hoping to, uh, to shut down Tord from this point. If Tord is able to counter that stadium, then we would see Tord uh, become the victor here. Don't know if he does have... Um, access to another um, giant hearth here. So what's the game plan here for, for, for Kaiwin? What's the road to victory? He needs to hope that that Lysander Lab never gets countered, and then maybe he can uh, find uh, the, the right attacker to, to finish this game up. I mean, I know I've already seen at least three giant uh, hearths. I, it's hard to imagine that Tord plays four, right? Oh, Victini, cool. <laughs> okay, that's Victini V. That's yeah. one answer. Cool. He's just gonna. He's like, all right. Well, I'm just gonna get rid of time. these. I'm gonna bring up this Victini. He treats the Mewtwo and Mew. Promotes the Victini V. All right. So, <laughs> Kaiwin's Kaiwin's at a at a very cool turn lined up, but Tord with the perfect answer built in sure. just gets to put all these energies onto his Victini, and he's threatening to knock out just about anything that Kaiwin has to offer. Kaiwin immediately retreats that Mew. Promotes. The Jirachi. Jirachi <laughs> finds <laughs> Professor's <laughs> Research. It's like, oh, there's those guys. Stellar Wish finding that Professor's Research that's been missing from Kaiwin's game the entire, basically the entire game. Kaiwin really struggling with the card draw aspect of this game. And there it is, Professor's Research drawing seven new cards, and there's all three <laughs> other. Oh, man, that's... That's got to hurt. Yeah, he can't help but, but laugh at that. He sees the three more researchers. Okay. It's not going to do much one. for him. Reset stamps down to, toward down to one, but there's already so many energy in play for Tord. Well, <laughs> looks like Absol's the attacker of choice. Uh, pretty awkward for him. He's going to be able to promote that to Dene, but... Great catcher promoting to Dene. Should not be enough damage to Still finish this up. Doesn't actually okay. even have a way to get out of the X spot. He locked himself with his own lab. Maybe you just hope Tord doesn't have an energy and in the one card hand. Yeah, that's got to be it, right? Oh, we'll see. Draw. Tord draws two cards total. Oh. There is that to Dene. Dene oh, change. Man. Six so new ones. Card. You have to believe he's got to have it. There it is. Wait. Well, wait, he wait, shows, no, no, no. He shows yeah. light, but he has energy yeah. and okay. switch. <laughs> 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 
And there it is, that handshake game one going to tour. <laughs> what an exciting finish, honestly. It, it was... I'll go first. It was well played, masterfully played by both players, but Tord really just showed how he has this okay. answer to everything, really, that, that Kaiwin could have uh, oh, shown him. Now, granted, yeah, a lot of this yeah. had to do with the fact that we saw no researchers, no professors' researchers from, uh, from Kaiwin basically the entire game. And yep. that's how you start to get that steady influx of energies. That's how you get that influx of attackers. When you don't have access to all these card draw effects, ideas. you're going to be in that awkward position where you're going to be yeah, missing a few I mean, uh, like key pieces of the puzzle. Of like yeah, we've, we've, we've seen how important it is for Kaiwen to, to get that Shrine of Punishment early, and we saw how important it is for him to get really that yeah, Lysander Lab end, late. Right? If he's I able to lock that in, I get like his Mimikyu working, yeah, he's going to be put in a pretty great spot. Now, he was able to find all the right cards. He just didn't have the draw support to go with it. So if he has the draw support, I feel like we see a completely different game, and it could uh, start to flip over into Kaiwen's favor. But he's, of course, he's playing against Tord Rekla, who is going to find a way here or there, some way. He's going to get himself back into a game. Both players really just doing exactly what their decks are capable of to put themselves in the best positions, and Tord came out on top that time. Is this kind of what you expect to see out of this uh, matchup every time? Like, is, the, is that the kind of back and forth that you expect to see out of these decks? Or or were you expecting a different game plan out of either player? Uh, no, I, I think both players found exactly what they needed to do at the right time. I think that Kaiwen wishes that his bench was a little more forgiving because he didn't want to use that Absol as a finisher. He wanted another Zacian, but that really wasn't up to him just with the way that his deck was starting to draw. So I, I feel like both players will go with very similar game plans and... Uh, this time around, Tord's just going to hope that uh, maybe he can uh, right. avoid the, the Shrine, or maybe the, when the Shrine comes down, he can, uh, he can get that Miraculous one more time and avoid the second Shrine. Well, prizes are coming down as both players are already Fire starting ball. up game two. Oh, boy. We s <laughs> what are we oboing about? Well, uh, Tord, Tord just started uh, his Mega Low Punny <laughs> and just it doesn't, it doesn't do too much oh boy. In, in a matchup like this. That is Mega Low Punny. And Jigglypuff, the tag team of dreams, going up against Jirachi, Stellar Wishes. Oh, well, terrible. Yeah, Zacian is a V Pokemon, so you're not going to see uh, Megalopunny and uh, Jigglypuff putting in too much work here. Yeah, it's just, this is not the matchup for that for that card. Yeah, that, for is, sure. that, that is a Pika-Rom card. <laughs> so, Megalopunny just oh, kind of yeah. eager to come out and it's play, but weird. not the right time. Says Tord as uh, Kaiwin right. starts his first turn of the game. Jirachi wishing upon a star, wishing for something to get him going. Kaiwin, of course, just looking to start getting some energies onto the ADP, and that's exactly what happens as he passes the turnover that's to Tord. Tord now with oh, yeah, that sure. Sorry, Mega yeah, Low Punny right, yeah. and Jigglypuff to roll it again? start uh, is. Is his, the rest of his hand going to look as bad as his starter, or is he going to have access to an explosive start once again? Well, it looks like his top deck... Oh, actually, no, that's a... I thought it was a Mewtwo, but it looks like it's actually a uh, Naganadel. Oh, I so thought he, that was a Mewtwo, too. Yeah, so, so instead, he, it's got to be a Welder onto the no. Mega Lopunny. Yeah, that's not where he wants to go there. He's going to go ahead and attach these energies. Um, he does... Uh, get to do a little bit of damage, but this isn't where he wants to go with this. He'd love to have the access uh, to really start doing a lot of damage with his Mewtwo, and instead he's kind of just stuck. He could uh, he could go ahead and attack, but where where are you getting with this? You, you might just make it easier for your opponent to, to bring up Arceus Dialgapalkia and use Ultra Creation. This is just an awkward start altogether for Tord as he's placed, playing his first Giant Hearth to find himself well, more, more than anything, to discard a card to draw, to thin his deck out of two fire energies. Yeah, he's going to go ahead and... Del GX go, going down. Chuck that not Mewtwo <laughs> into the discard pile. Finding two fires and adding them to his hand, potentially gearing up for a big puffy smasher. <laughs> That's where you want to be, right? <laughs> that sounds pretty good. <laughs> I mean, it sounds kind of cute and warm, right? But man, when you have enough energy, it's anything but. <laughs> well, we will see what Tord decides to go with. I think the next supporter that he has lined up is a professor research. So I don't know even if he wants to like throw away these fire energies, but it might just be important that he gets some of these into the discard pile uh, to, to make his top decks a little better. And right now I think he's, yay. 
he's pondering just using the, the only the one there so that he has access to some of these later down the road when he does have the, the welders, but he also wants to thin out just a little bit more. That's that massive big brain power right there out of Torrid. Looks like research obviously cannot be played yet because of welder, but that you're not wrong, that may be the supporter of choice here for the second turn of the game, and that's not where you want to be if you're Torrid. Yeah, this is pretty rough. He actually, I think he's holding Great Catcher, but he didn't want to hit the Arceus Dagopakio for 120 because he has no second attack lined up that would take a knockout. Like so, Cherish Ball, too. So he's just going to go ahead and continue to uh, to take out the There's Jirachi. No he might There's be lined no up for that next turn. Who knows? Cut it like. so now Kaiwin starting his second turn of the game. Sai Kaiwin go first last time, but just did not have that it factor in that game. Will it be different this time around? Will we see a turn two alter creation? Oh, I don't see the energy yet. I don't see it either, Kyle. I do see a lot of options, though. I see a quick ball, so we may be seeing a, a Dedenne this turn. Seems well, very important to get that ultra creation Already going. played the Dedenne for the turn, so. Oh, he did play a Dedenne already. Hoping for potentially a supporter, but not able to find that. Just been so supporter-like this entire match. And also, playing down that Dedenne means that you're actually charging up Mega Lopunny to do some work now. And we're getting some relevant damage onto the board. This is super awkward for Kaiwen. We're talking about what, 130 damage? Uh, the it's okay. getting up there. We're, we're right. talking, we're talking hits. <laughs> Crazy. Yeah, it's getting big. It's what, 60, 60 plus 60 for each one. So we're talking 180 now. 180. Yeah, I don't do bad well. Yeah. <laughs> We've known this for years Sorry? now, Kyle. This shouldn't surprise you. Sorry. Played the quick ball. Yeah. What did you Okay, oh, I looks the, like uh, the Jirachi. All right. Okay. Yeah. Looks like they're just double checking, making sure that everything's side. still going smoothly, and looks to Go be ahead. that way. As maybe I. Th Oop, ten, yep. No, there's no way we saw an Intrepid Sword. Did we? Yeah, I mean he he didn't have anything else that he could really do there. Oh, he really didn't have access to anything okay. else. He couldn't get that turn to alter creation. Never found that energy, which means Intrepid Sword was the only oh thing yeah, he sorry, could do before right. the end of his turn. And now Torb oh yeah. may be getting that Thanks. breath of fresh air out of nowhere. Like, I really expected this to be a Kaiwin Kababe game. But, I mean, now it seems to be like, okay, well, you find your Cherish Ball, you find your Mewtwo and Mew, you start setting up. Yeah, and he, he does have it uh, available to him. He has the, the multiple fire energies that he can grab off this hearth. He does have Welder in hand, and he has the Cherish Ball. So he's going to have six energies on the field. It's just going to be in really goofy spots for him. But Well, I mean, you're going to be jumping, ballooning, and you're going to be setting up a Mewtwo and Mew. This is where you want to be. This kind of works out. Yeah. It's really Considering <laughs> the end of your first turn, you were not unhappy to be in this spot of your tour. Yeah, and... You wonder if, if the Sorry, risk what? from Kaiwen was worth it to, to go ahead and promote and and go all in on the DNA. But if he did find the energy in order to use Alter Creation, he'd be in such a dominant spot right here. He'd feel so great. Uh, taking this damage would not mean anything to him because he already had flipped that GX counter and he was setting up to take a big knockout coming in the, the next few turns or even next turn if he was able to find the right ca hot cards to finish. Did you take a look at his hand? Did he have any other options besides the DNA? Uh, no, he he had um, Custom Catcher where he could have maybe drawn one card, but it, that, yeah, that's super risky, too. I think he would have had to, like, play a card that he didn't want to, so. Right. So, yeah, maybe his hands were just tied. Maybe Kaiwen just really didn't have very many uh, choices there and just went for the lesser of two evils and wasn't able to find that aurora, uh, aurora energy. So now Tord again, again finds that uh, Mewtwo and Mew. We see that Welder in hand. There's two more energy coming down onto Mewtwo and Mew. And now three more cards drawn here for Torridus. Now he's starting to set up. Now he's starting to feel comfortable. Definitely was not comfortable at the end of the first turn. But things are changing. He's home. <laughs> he's, yeah. He's finding it. Mewtwo's the, home. Does have that psychic energy for himself as well. Was able to counter a shrine before Mewtwo was in play, which is hum so huge for him. Yeah, there's a limited amount of shrines. The, the shrines have to stick damage. And when they don't, it's just, it's a wasted opportunity. But again, Kaiwen forced it to Denny there, forced to try to find him some options. And you see him spinning those dice. He's not happy with the spot of your, oh, well, if you're a Kaiwen fan, you're not happy with this spot for Kaiwen. And we see him metal energy drawn for the turn, 
for Kaiwen. Well, he's got 10 damage on a Pokemon that has 240 hit points. Sashian does 230. So there's things to do. Are they good things? No. But they are things that you can try to aim for. And honestly, I don't even know if his hand's going to let him do anything else. Oh my goodness. So <laughs> just altered creation for, for no extra effects. Wow. Can I see our discard pile? Cool. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So <laughs> that happens. Interesting. So th that was Kaiwen saying, okay, my, my window to do anything with this Ar Arky style again, Palki, is closed. Yeah. What is my best option here? Do I go with Intrepid Sword? Do I go with with Altered Creation in this spot? Is He went with the Altered Creation, and that starts towards third turn of the game. Now, Torrid has already put some heavy damage on the ADP. We see the third consecutive Welder. I mean, that's just three welders in a row and three on the first three turns of the game here for Tord. Things yeah. were looking really, really rough for, for Tord before he, before Kaiwin started his second turn of the game, and then everything flipped. And now Tord just looking like he's going to be taking a dominant 2-0 victory against Kaiwin Kababe. Yeah, this is exactly where he wants to be. This is this has worked out pretty great for him, and unfortunately his opponent just hasn't been able to, to give him very much to fight against. But if you're toward, you don't complain. You just keep on pushing through. This is where w when you f when you find that 90% that you really just try to push through the rest of it and get yourself in a good spot. Is there a route to victory for Kaiwin here still? Like, does he still have a an opening available to him? We know that the ADP is going to go down. We know Tord's going to go down to two prizes remaining. What can Kaiwin do? to keep this competitive. He obviously is going to need to get a return knockout, but then you have to face down a Mewtwo and Mew with four energy sitting in the bench. Right. <laughs> this, this, is, this is where it, it becomes pretty difficult to, to find, your, find your way out of this one here. Knows that if he does have that Zashi and come up and, and end up taking a knockout, uh, that he is going to be easily return KO'd by a Mewtwo, and there is actually just no way for uh, Kaiwin's deck to knock out a Mewtwo in one hit after you've already seen um, that Ultra Creation is going to be providing that big effect. Is this checkmate? Well, we never want to call it early, do we? But, <laughs> but man, well, it's, right. look, it's looking pretty hard. <laughs> Two prizes remaining here for Tord. Kaiwin not able to attack yet with anything but an Ultra Creation GX without its full effect. This is Kaiwen's fourth turn. He has nothing in play. He has only a single metal energy in play on the Zacian. Promotes the Mewtwo and Mew, which I think is a huge first step. That's a professor's research. Still horrible. Yeah, it's Gonna keep on pushing through, finds the using the Jirachi's uh, ability now, but man, there's just nothing in there that he really wants to, to work with. He, of course, can just grab the saucer, but. Saucer, tag call, potential options, but none of these options seem to spell a victory for Kai when the big part of this turn was promoting that Mewtwo and Mew. He needed to do that. He needed to find a way to stop the Mewtwo and Mew before it could get dangerous. You can handle a, uh, a Jigglypuff, you cannot handle a Mewtwo. Right. But how do you handle But this? how do you handle the Mewtwo? <laughs> how? No, this is not this is not a rhetorical question. <laughs> <laughs> Use that hashtag play Pokemon and tell us how you can handle this Mewtwo. <laughs> I do not know how you can handle this Mewtwo of your Kaiwen. I don't know if Kaiwen knows how you can handle this Mewtwo of your Kaiwen. There is just too little too late, maybe. There's a Mew. I guess that's one way. You don't have a reset stamp, right? Yep. Tord still has a large hand. So he could put uh, the chip damage, get 30 damage onto the Mewtwo. Uh, this Pokemon potentially falls, uh, gets knocked out. You're in hoping the, it gets knocked out. In the active spot. Then you use There's Great shine. Catcher, though. That yeah. does mean game, set, and match. Going to Tord Reckliff against Kaiwin oh, Kababe. That's two games to nothing Thanks. in... 
honestly, what I felt like was going to be a 1-1 finish at, at the end of this game because of uh, uh, given their their starts, right? Given the first turn of the game for both of these players, I was like, oh, this is this is not looking good for Tord. This is looking like we're going to be going to game three. But then Kylan couldn't find.